Hello people, as usual, it's your boy Ambassador Ambassador again. I just come to review some of these videos, tell you guys what I think, and then trying to get your opinion. I said some of these things is just to get people talking. I just want us to start thinking about some of these things. I'll bring up a lot of, um, should I call it, um, rhetoric questions, thought-provoking ideas, just so people think about these things. Because when I talk to the everyday man, it's even like we have blocked our minds away from these things and we don't care. We just want to live our everyday life that these things affect our everyday life so we cannot be blind to them now what i'll talk about today is um, what i like to call african medicine based on this video you see african medicine versus european medicine well he's talking about understanding i am not on understanding i'm overstanding let me tell him something about medicine you know what i call european medicine the model the european model of health is what we call a mechanical view of health it is not healing it is symptomatic treatment treat the symptom if chibazo's eyes are sick if he can't chibazo can't see properly instead of curing the two eyes we give chibazo an extra two eyes he was struggling with two eyes now he has to struggle with four and sometimes he needs six eyes for eyes to see long distance and eyes to see short distance when a, when you go to have a kidney when you have a kidney failure they are not going to treat your kidney they are going to remove the kidney and tell you to go home and the work that was performed by two kidneys is now being performed by one kidney. No wonder if you have a kidney failure and they remove the kidney, you live only for two years. If you have cancer in your body, they are not going to treat the cancer. They are going to cap it, bomb, bomb all, kill all the good cells and the bad cells with very red radioactive treatments. So that is what we have harvested from what he calls treatment. That is not health. That is death and destruction. Most of Africa's health was preventative. It was dietetic, dietetic, you know, based on a diet. You change your diet. You ask yourself what causes cancer. What causes your own heart to attack you? Imagine your heart. Your heart is supposed to look after you. Your heart is supposed to guide you. But now you have a situation where your own heart says, Chivazo, I have had enough. I am going to attack you. But they can't deal with that because they don't know health. They are children. They couldn't have invented anything. They went there. 5.5 million years we were here. We taught them everything. We ruled Europe for 600 years. Look, it's for 800 years from Spain and Portugal. You go and look at the writings of Havicina. At a time when Europe, you know, every time you had a cold or you had a disease, they thought it was Satan, a devil. That's why they have transferred all that knowledge now. They have kicked out Christianity in their countries and they have, you know, they you know, put it in Africa. Now, in Africa, everything is devil, devil, devil this, devil accident, devil, you know, illness, devil that. It's like the devil has taken over the world. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he raised a lot of valid points. At times, some people like this are a little bit extreme in their thoughts, but at times you need to be extreme to be able to dig in some of these things. They're very passionate about it. He raises a lot of valid points. First, I just want to put that out there. Very valid points he's raised in regards to comparing African medicine to European medicine and how he explains the fact that uh, European medicine is not to cure, it's just to maintain the problem and then till you die. And then keep making money from it. Capitalist system, what do we expect? So, also, apart from the fact that um, some of our experts, They, they, they are built by external forces. What do I mean by that? Our doctors are trained using the European curriculum. They go and specialize in Europe and America. So, till they have that external validation, they don't feel like they are doctors. Till we carry out studies, I remember like when there was COVID and I think they discovered something was in Tanzania or somewhere. And they said, no, it's fake, it's not proper. Because it did not come from some international structure, some Cambridge, some Harvard, some medical structure in America validated it. We said it's trash. We could not export in the rest of Africa. But if they just told us that this thing is coming from America and has been researched, even when we know that it has not been properly tested, like the vaccines that came on board, we will still run with it. So that there's that complex where the African system always feels that till things are validated, either our ideas or our should I call them positions or our expertise? If it's not validated by Europe or America, it's not valid. What can I say? That's the mind of the African. Also, 
I always, in my videos, I talk about these three pillars of development. Health, education, food security. They are independent pillars, but they are also very related. And we know like a building, every pillar stands on its own. When you have done construction, there's what they call the chain, which they use rods to connect those pillars on the ground, connect them on the decking, where it's like they are standing alone, but they are all connected to hold the house firm. So these three pillars of development, which is health, educational system, or you say health, education, and food security are very related. So health is one of them. And if you have noticed, I talk a lot about some of these things, about African medicines, our ways, um, our valuable, should I call it, medicinal approaches to things, which we have abandoned or we have lost, and it's costing us very terribly. Now, when I'm talking about, um, let's say, what's African medicine? It's not developed. We don't have any books I can refer you to. But I've done a lot of research in that direction where you know, you start to understand that, okay, Africans had things like they were called their evil forest. The evil forest is the place where they're actually very medicinal plants and they're trying to protect so people don't go into clear it for farming purposes. Now, we also had things like every village will have its own healer, as they used to call him, the great healer. You watch some Nigerian movies, you hear about the healer of the village, the healer. Um, they'll say she has secret power. She can massage your leg and then the sprain will disappear. She'll give you herbs for malaria. She'll give you herbs for typhoid. She'll give you herbs for this. These things were studied in an informal structure, but they were also very helpful for the African community. Those healers knew the various grass which were passed on from generation to generation. I thought I was telling someone as I went to the picnics, some of the picnics, and they still have these things. And the tour guide was showing us various streets and saying, this one cures this, this one cures this, this one cures this. Also, the hours when, like, you remember, they would say, okay, because the, the healer wants to see in the, with the eye of the spirit. Those are two spiritual things we put. But it's a logical thing. The hours when the healers usually go to the forest to collect some of these plants is when the plant is most potent. So it's usually those early mornings when, yeah. So in science of photosynthesis and how the plant produces, those way, that's when it's most potent. And that's when any plant or nutrient you want to get from the plant is best to collect at those hours. So there were those concepts around African medicine, which we are losing and we have lost, where, one, if we don't come back to document some of these things, we are Africans, and if we don't have our medicine, no matter how much we import the other systems from the other countries, it will never be as effective for us like our own medicines. Okay. As I said, one, we need to go back, document, structure some of these systems, to make it easy for us to scale it up. But we cannot be in those informal settings of one traditional healer with one of their grandchildren going to the bush to collect grass. They can just collect grass for 10, 50 people max. But we cannot start to scale up some of these things, take into consideration the real problems of the urban African setting now and then yeah. We need to document some of these processes. Say, this cures this, this cures this, this is this. If possible, what elements in this, that level of research on our medicine is going to help. And then lastly, I think we need to start sharing our lessons learned. First, what are the failures or the challenges we are facing now? We break it down. What are the, the failures? What happened before we lost all of our practices in the past? Lastly, how can we move on from this? How can we solve it? So when I talk about lessons learned, it's in these three questions and one solution added to it and i feel like, like africans i'll go into some of some videos i'll talk a little bit more about details about the african medicine but i feel like we need to pay attention to some of these things what is african medicine what does it really mean how did it serve us as a people and then why did we lose it if we don't ask some of these questions we just keep living like blind bats eat today drink sleep whatever is pushed down your throat you take it and then you complain as usual and then so i always say it. i'm saying these things just to get us thinking like share most importantly comment comment i want to know your opinion it's your boy, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just my opinion